back to another episode of RNT Fitness Radio. This is episode 14, and today Akash and I have with us one of our coaches, Ben. So over to you, Ben. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? I'm, you know what? I'm going I'm to kind of read. I don't want to pronounce your surname because I might get it wrong. I knew it. I, I knew it. As soon as you were like, coach, Ben. <laughs> okay. Well, you didn't know what to say after that, did you? Yeah. Let's, let's start with the surname, all right? It's not as hard as it looks on paper. It's Muller Mehik. Right. Okay. Um, I've been saying it right then because that's in my head. That's what I've been telling myself. When I read it, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's how you say it. So we, oh, yeah, Ben Muller. To be fair, <laughs> Never to seen be it, fair I'm glad you didn't butcher me straight away, so I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, so we've got that out of the way. That um, I'm not very good at name pronunciations. Um, over to yeah. you. So give us a bit about your background. All right. So I fell into this training style and body comp and whatnot. I was always interested in football, um, went to university, heard what the coaching program was, and as soon as it deviated from football, I thought, hmm, that's not for me. So I chose something health and fitness related, finished a degree in sports science, um, did my PT qualifications, and then just got more and more into it. And as I was working on it, I could see that I wasn't getting good transformations with anyone, wasn't actually getting any good results. So I interned with Mark Coles at M10, mm -hmm. uh, stepped my game up a lot, then started to get better at body composition, got some good results on myself with clients, came back to London, worked for Ultimate Performance, Stayed there for about 15, 16 months, and then moved out to Toronto, started doing online, and now I'm back in the UK and doing it all over again. So that's my story in terms of where my education's been and what I've done. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get into it uh, a little bit later in the podcast in terms of like what mistakes I've made along the way with body form, yeah. we're, muscle. We're all over uh, that, definitely. Yeah. So how long have you been in the fitness industry? Um, officially like 10 years. Okay. So I started with this age 18. It's a bit veteran and I uh, haven't even hit 30 yet. So yeah, you put in the, uh, put in the time already. It's good. Akash, you had a question. Yeah. How did you find uh, personal training different in Toronto compared to London? Out of interest. Was it pretty mm -hmm. similar? For me, it just seems like there's a less of an emphasis on like heavy body transformations. It's more health orientated. Yeah. Um, CrossFit is a lot more influential like, in, in North America than it is here, at least from what I've seen. And yeah, I think the biggest difference is we're just a little bit ahead in terms of body transformations and nutrition and whatnot, even though their lifestyle is more geared towards yeah. more healthy living. So did that set you apart then? Yeah, for sure. I mean, as yeah. soon as I got there, I started working for a company called KX Health. Um, they're based in Yorkville. And you know, the emphasis wasn't ever on body transformation. So when we brought that to the gym, it was like a huge yeah. niche straight away. So they, cool. their interest in their gym yeah. increased immediately. Yeah. What well, the yeah, gym is cool. What Toronto's a cool place. You've been, haven't you? you, you yeah, he actually, he actually, ben actually gave me a recommendation when I went out there. Did it? Yeah. yeah um, over? Was it over, right? Ovest. Ovest. Ovest, yeah. yeah. It's a good place. What, what's yeah, that, gym? Italian, Italian. No, Italian restaurant. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think a recommendation of a gym. <laughs> no, no. So what, yeah, you, what are the gyms like out there compared to the UK? Are they like bigger in scale, typical kind of US like warehouse style gyms or? Yeah, we've got a lot of, lot of warehouse style gyms. So, you know, you've got like 10 pieces of like the same kit in a warehouse gym. It's, it's awesome if you're, you know, you're a bodybuilder and you want to just get in there and not worry about getting on equipment. But then you do also have like boutique gyms that are well into the health side and just, you know, set up for that. Yeah. It depends on what you're looking for. I think the thing is, the size of that city and country, there's so much available. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Okay, so since you started, you've put on around 20, 30 kilos of, of muscle, right? So you started off... I wish. You I wish. wish it was 30 kilos. I, 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 did, I did read this, and I was thinking, to just so people know, this is Akash that wrote the questions <laughs> today. I looked at that, and I'm thinking, that's a lot of muscle tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Maybe mean you meant body weight? Do you mean pounds? <laughs> no, I, I put on 20, 30 kilos in weight. In total oh, that's weight. it, weight. Ah, <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Yeah. But so, whether or not it was 20 or 30 kilos muscle, I think that's uh, that would be overstating it a little bit. So to, so talk us through it. What weight did you start at? Um, where are you at now? Like, what's the peak that you've been at? 
talk us through that. Right. So I started u- university 18 years old, 63 kilos wet through. And you're, um, how, how tall are you? I'm six foot two. Shit. Oh, wow. Fuck me. Yeah, okay. and stone. For those of you who work in pounds and stones. Um, so yeah, I was really like, Damn. never been to the gym before, had crazy endurance from playing football. But yeah, piss week. And um, I was doing a degree that was, you know, sport and health and science with no understanding of nutrition, never been in the gym, never did anything properly. Um, so my housemates were really into training and lifting and had been doing it for ages. So I kind of fell into it with them. They were like, oh, hey, we're going to go to the gym. Do you want to come and join us? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I play football. I'm going to be in great shape. This will be easy. Mm. We get in there. They load up a barbell with like 60 kilos, as you do. And I'm thinking, all right, here we go. I'll bench out 10 reps. I got nailed after two reps. I couldn't oh, move the bar. Just stuck underneath it. And they were like, have you ever been to the gym before? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been to the gym. They're like, Ben, like, this is a warm-up weight. They worked up to like 80, 90 kilos way back then. I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. So I was always chasing them to try and like get stronger, get bigger, obviously. So um, I fell into some like horrible perma-bulking strategies. Um, I've been there, done that. Yeah. So this is what used to happen. We used to go to the gym, no real set structure, just, you know, today's Monday, let's go do bench. Tomorrow's Tuesday, let's go do back and shoulders, Wednesday legs and so forth. And uh, my diet was horrible. Like, we'd finish the workout, come home. I'd choose the cheapest whey protein I could find, blend it with ice cream, blend it with uh, honey, <laughs> blend it with what else? Anything I could do to make it sweet because it was so cheap and nasty tasting. Yeah, yeah. Blend it, up, drink that, cook a pizza up in the oven, have some uh, Skittles and Lucas Aid on the side. No, this is a true story. And nail all of that as my post workout and just sit there in a comatose and then wait for like three or four hours to eat again. So that one meal was probably about 2,000 calories. And bear in mind, I was what, 63 kilos. Damn. We'd go out and overeat and overeat. So for the first maybe six months, I gained like 10 kilos. And then I was like, yeah, this is working so well. I'm gaining weight. I'm getting yeah. strong. Yeah. And then, yeah, skin broke out like crazy. And, I, and, uh, the weight gain was fat gain, so I had to start getting smarter about my nutrition and actually counting what I was doing, pulling away huge amounts of sugar and whatnot. Yeah, I think a few of us have fallen into that trap. I remember uh, my experience was actually at UP. Um, I decided to do a show at the last minute. So I got Akash to write me a training routine, and I think he had me training. It was like four or five days a week, but two days per week were double sessions, weren't they? Yeah. So yeah. Um, calories were like five, five and a half thousand of, you know, air quotes, clean food. Like it was, it wasn't junk food. This was just going all out. But I was just watching the scale weight go up and it's going mm. up, it's going up. So I'm telling myself, right, I need to start dieting in like five weeks. So I need to put on as much muscle tissue as possible. So Nick Mitchell walks in and he literally just looked at me and went, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Basically told me to start dieting early. Um, okay. Yeah, so we've all been guilty of it, I think, of, you know, just chasing the scale away, either in your case, just, you know, overdoing the calories and the sugary foods, just to see that body weight go up. And, and it's an ego trip, you, you get what? stronger in the gym, you feel really good until you take your top off in the mirror and then you get a reality check. But yeah. you know what? The worst thing was I didn't even learn from it the first time around. So I was like, okay, so I ate too much sugar this time. Like This is way back when, we're talking almost 10 years now. I thought, yeah, I ate too much sugar. That's why my skin broke out. You know, if I was a little bit more controlled, I could gain more muscle, right? So I did all of that. Probably got to like 75 kilos at the end of it. And in 2014, I went to M10, like after doing the internship, did quite well, managed to get, to get a place there, start working. And I had this idea in my mind, like I'm going to do my first competition, but I've got to put on muscle. So the same thing that you were thinking yeah. in terms of I've got – probably six months to put on as much size as I can yeah the sun patch stories man so what happened was I was doing my workouts nutrition was a little bit better I wasn't eating shit like all the time Uh, but post-workout I was like right this is my chance to get all my calories in so I have my protein shake have some carbs then the next meal I'd have another shake with sun pat like peanut butter because it was cheap literally like half the job (laughs) <laughs> like a good half, half a job, job right? <laughs> and then put in like a hundred gram of oats, 
and then just uh, mix that up. Yeah, man. It was just crazy amounts of calories. So I literally stayed on about 5,000 calories for four months before a competition. Yeah. Blew up to 94 kilos, which is like the heaviest I've ever been in my whole life. Yeah. I don't know what the hell my body fat was, but it wasn't comfortable. It was like, you know, when you're walking around and you're breathing a bit harder than yeah, you should be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, this is not good. You go to put on your shoes, you sit down putting on your shoes and you're out of breath doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know, you're getting ready for your workout. It's hard, right? You just, you're walking over to the dumbbells, you're like, oh, I've got to get these off the rack and onto my knees and then got to press them. <laughs> like everything was difficult, yeah. So I made that mistake twice. Twice. So you went high sugar the first time? High fat yeah, the second high time, high but second overall time. just high calories. Yeah. That we that we now know is high calories. Man, your, yeah. your gut on the high fat diet must have been horrible, man. Oh man, always. But I'll tell you one thing though, like mistakes or not, what it did do was having such a huge surplus helped with strength gains. Yeah. So yeah. every time I did blow up on a huge amount of food, I got very strong. So even though there was a lot of fat yeah. gain, well, weight moves fat. weight, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That helped. See, we talk about this in our seminars. Like, there's a Catch slide. 22. Yeah, there's a slide that we call, like, you know, how fat is too fat. And really, it comes down to, I guess, the, the crux of me is, like, how, how do you feel? And kind of what do you do, do as a job? Say you're a bodybuilder and you want to jump up by, like, a whole weight class. You have to put on a ton of size, right? If oh yeah. You, if, you, if if bodybuilding is your primary goal, you want to jump up a whole class, and you work an office job, and you're married and you're settled down, you know, and you don't need to impress the <laughs> missus anymore. You can afford to accrue that additional body fat <laughs> to let the strength go up and you know gain that additional muscle tissue. But yeah. if like us back in the day, you know, you're on the gym floor with clients, then it's a different story because it's like, ah, does it look good? If you're Akash, you can kind of get away with it, you know, have like a 30 millimeter umbilicus read in. <laughs> hide, yeah, yeah, yeah. But hide it under his wow. t shirt. Whereas then you've got yeah. me, the, at my, the peak of my bulk, my uh, umbilicus reading was like 10 mil, but my face was like the Michelin man. It oh, was, man. yeah. But this is the thing, right? You're on the gym floor. You have to look a certain way, and that's where sometimes it's as, as Akash said, it's like a catch me to you. If you can go for it with the calories and accept that little bit of body fat gain, strength gains are, are going to increase, which is going to correlate to hopefully a little bit more muscle tissue. Yeah, but it depends where you're at, what you do for work, how you feel comfortable. What do you think, Akash? You know what? I mean, yeah, I was going to say it probably was it probably formed a lot of the foundation in your physique as well, right? Yeah. Even though you made a mistake of putting on the weight, if you hadn't done that, then you might have stayed 63 kilos, right? Right. So I would say, like, actually, as a beginner, it might not be the worst thing in the world. If you can live with, you know, gaining a bit more body fat, that's the best time to grow. That's going to be exactly. the core of your muscle mass. You may as well accept Maximize it. Yeah, and you're, and you're, really pretty, um, you're pretty lean naturally, aren't you? You're not someone who's going to, you're not skinny fat per se, right? No, I'm not. But at the same time, so, I think, so for, you, so for I someone like you, you probably could get away with it a bit more as well. Maybe, but I think that's always going to come down to like how active are you anyway. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. If you're a sedentary person, can you class yourself as uh, naturally skinny fat? You're just not very active in my yeah. mind. Yeah. If you were very active, then you wouldn't be skinny fat. You'd just be skinny. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, you know, that's my take on it. So would you class what you did as a mistake? Or if you went back, would you do it again? Oh, I would do it again because I learned so much from yeah. it. I mean, now I know that as a natural guy, you're not going to put on like tons and tons of mass every single year. It's just not going to happen. Eat the beginning part, the you get away with it. Yeah. So right now, like, I don't need to put on five, 10 kilos. It's just, it's going to be a lot of fat gain. I can be slower about it, except that I just have to enjoy going to the gym, improving performance, and that eventually in maybe two or three years, it might look a little bit better than it did two or three years ago yeah, but once you tapped out that first bit it's, it's all really really slow so it's quite demoting when you think about that right what's, yeah but it's true isn't it what's your goal right now Akash um, six pounds in three years <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and you'd be happy with it right yeah I would love it if it happened but <laughs> yeah and then you've got to hold on to all of it when you die it down exactly yeah so yeah just being realistic so, um, so you did that, which is an interesting story and great for like new people listening, um, that you do have to truly like maximize those first, you know, two, three years in the gym. 
But what mistakes did you make? What mistakes would you say that you did make though? It doesn't have to be nutritional. It could be training, it could be supplements. Did you waste money or talk oh. through mistakes? <laughs> oh man, so many. Um, training wise, actually, one thing I did very well and me and my friends all did this, uh, we followed a lot of like Christian Thibodeau's work. So mm -hmm. a lot of it was, you know, ramping up to your maximum for the day. Like not a true 1RM, but just below yeah, yeah, yeah. And every workout we went in, we tried to get stronger, and then we did tons and tons of volume. So alongside like the huge calories we were eating, we were actually getting stronger over time. So we, we weren't building muscle, whereas a lot of people got trapped into like bodybuilding, pump workouts, and never really got any stronger at that age. Um, but in terms of like the biggest mistake I ever made was just putting way too much emphasis on supplements. I had a my supplement bill for one year was like just under three grand. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like all in all, total, like, like on zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, fish oil. You fell into the polyquid thing though, right? Yeah, I didn't want to say it, but now that you said it. <laughs> no, no, I did the same, right? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I did everything. I did the testosterone optimization protocol. I did this, that, the other. I was like, I, you know, truly believe that absolute machine but yeah it didn't work um it's obviously it's got its health benefits yeah it's got health benefits it's all good stuff but yeah i put way too much priority into that and not enough into my calories and just continuing to train hard that's the biggest mistake and then after that i would just say this is one everyone makes and all my clients will still probably do this consistency like i would have a great run for three months get into the shape of my life and they're like yeah i'm gonna build on that i'm gonna put more muscle onto my frame it's gonna be great and then, you know, have two or three months where I didn't do that and then had to just restart. Yeah. What do you say so to clients who what do you say to clients who go through that? Why are you doing it? What's what's your why? What's your reason? It's like in, in almost anything, whether it's like your business or whether it's your physique or whatever it may be, like what is your driving thing that's gonna make you do that? Every time I've booked in a photo shoot or did a competition, nothing deterred me from what I was doing. Mm. I was, you know, carrying meals with me doing what I needed to do whenever it wasn't a strong enough reason yeah I'd find an excuse like oh I can't do it because whatever you know what about after you know you said uh, once you get into shape you want to try and build on that that momentum but it's yeah. hard to do it what, what do you tell them so hard so, well I mean let's it, it's got to if it's like a photo shoot it's super hard because you're recovering if you yeah. properly you know, got shredded you, you've done it yourself I think yeah. what, last year that first month it takes probably a month or two to come back to normal yeah. And then thereafter, I would just set some big performance goals. So like, you know, whatever your predictor lifts are, let's get good at Romanian deadlift, bench press, whatever it is, and just work on bringing those numbers up. Like you said, it's going to probably take you two, three years to put more tissue on your frame. So yeah, yeah work on those, build on those. Be okay with the fact that you may gain a bit more body fat because you're doing more sustainable things. But as long as you're getting stronger in the gym, we're all good. Perfect. Yeah, good point. So what are you most passionate about? Now, this is, as I said at the beginning, um, Akash wrote these. I didn't write them this week. So do you want to take the reins of this one, Akash? Like, do you mean, are you asking him fitness-wise? Are you asking like in life or what well, We can, we can expand it. We can expand it. I mean, I was just talking mainly for fitness, but you can expand it if there's something bigger than fitness that's, that you're more passionate about right now. I mean, I think in terms more. of fitness, yeah. It's just going to be helping as many people as we can and just kind of cutting through the BS and getting to what I wish somebody could have told me when I was 18. Just like, okay, Ben, you don't need to perma bulk. If you just follow your, your macros on this, if you just go and make your progressions in the gym, just doing this, this and this, you know, you don't need to max out. You don't need to do this. And just gave me guidance. And if we had like, well, co coaches like us basically – Yep. in people's corners who could be like right this is the right way don't go killing yourself still enjoy life hanging out with your friends and doing whatever you need to do but making progress and not thinking you have to prioritize supplement protocols or some crazy programs or whatnot that's my passion would be to help a whole bunch of people who are trying to get in shape in a much more sustainable normal way yeah. now i know sustainable isn't necessarily the easiest things when you're when you're trying to do a photo shoot but i mean like longevity and long term when you're outside of a photo shoot yeah yeah i think you're singing, singing from the same hymn sheet as us really 100 percent sustainability year round but 
being able to switch it on when you have to for competitions, photo shoots and so on. And, you know, perhaps implement some unsustainable protocols with diet yeah, and so I mean, on. You're there to being, get a result. Yeah, being, you know, below, truly below 10% body fat is not sustainable. It's, we all know how hard it is. So going the extra mile to do that, you know, for like a short period of time, okay. But long term, yeah, that sustainable stuff has to kick in. And you have to love what you do. You have to have a really good reason to do it. So I think for clients, if they're doing a 12, 16 weeks, they need to be unsustainable for a bit. You know, they need to push it. They need to push it hard and then yeah, build sustainable also, habits afterwards. No? It depends on who you have in front of you as well. Like, I don't want to say, make a blanket statement on that one just because I've seen and coached some people who yeah. don't have to do much. I'm not saying they don't work hard, but they don't have to do as much as the next person to get into crazy shape. And then other yeah, I mean, people genetics have, obviously have a play a part to play. But what I'm yeah. getting at is, if if someone wants to get a really good say before and after picture, would you not yeah. need to implement some more unsustainable for the time being tactics in order to get there, and then shift to a more sustainable approach afterwards? It's the beauty of Skype. For the, for those of you listening to this, I can see facial expressions. I can see Ben like, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just like potentially yes. Um, it's. Yeah, it's hard to say yes or no. Like, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but you've got so, yeah, it depends on who you have in front of you and what they're capable of. Like, I've had to push people really, really hard to get on stage and do well. And then other people, from what I've seen on paper, it's just like, dude, you didn't even have to try. It was so easy. Like, you're shredded and your calories are nice and high and, you know, you did a bit of cardio and it was easy for you. Yeah. But yeah, more, more often than not, people have yeah. to work. Well, that, that's a rare situation, right? That last one. Yeah, you don't, you don't get them. Many, you don't get them often. Yeah. No, it's usually guys. It's usually guys with yeah. a lot of muscle. Yeah. Yeah. For for me, it comes down to time frames. If we get somebody to start with us yeah. and they want a dramatic transformation and 12, 16 weeks, and I'm with Akash on the whole, you, you're going to have to grind. You know, especially the last few weeks, and then we'll work on sustainability afterwards. I like to get them to overshoot where they want to be, and then try mm. and reach a set point somewhere in between. Um, but I don't do that with every client that starts with me. Um, so a lot of clients, you know, they, they do just want to build lifestyle habits and just look yeah. leaner over the long term. They want to work with me for six months. So in that case, why am I going to make them suffer? You know, I, I want yeah. them to enjoy the process. And it's only the ones that come to me and write, I want a transformation. I want to do this. I want to be on your yeah. website. I want to do it within 12 weeks. Well, okay, motherfucker, then suck it up. Yeah. This is, yeah, yeah. is going to be hard. Um, yeah, it's for those that want the extreme, they got to do the extreme, right? Yeah, but, but but I don't force it upon people. Definitely not. No. Um, no. I even I don't know if you saw yesterday, but I put on Instagram stories that like one of my clients. I mean, she's even done a photo shoot, but she thanked me for not treating her like a competitor and giving her breathing space and you know allowing her. Like she said to me, I'm really struggling with like body image right now. I said, okay, well, just don't send me any check-in photos. Like if you're not comfortable right now, don't do yeah, it. Yeah. Let's just work on performance goals. Let's get you stronger in the gym. So actually, for a period of time, I had her even stop checking in with her body weight. And it was just yeah. sending me like how she was getting on in the gym. So we completely switched her mindset to performance rather than her body. Um, and now we've gradually started to get back on track and, you know, got a message thanking me for it, for taking that approach. So it's definitely no one size fits all. It no, depends where the client not. is at. Not. Yeah. If anyone's preaching that, you know, there's one way. Yeah. I'm very, very skeptical. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So strength training, you've touched on strength a few times. You were quite fortunate in that from the off, you know, you, you base your programs on strength and Thibodeau's principles and you're mentored by Mark Coles and so on. So what would be your top three tips um, for somebody that's at a, a plateau right now in terms of strength? Um, it's going to depend on why they're at that plateau. More often than not, it's just because they've been doing that same thing over and over again. So, sorry, running out of battery on the phone, just need to fix that. Right. The biggest thing is, like, if you've been doing, say, intensity for ages and ages and you've tapped it out, then you've got to change something. Maybe go to a volume block, build a bit of muscle mass, then come back to it. That always seems to work very well. Um, identify what is holding back that lift. So if it's like a press, you know, are you weak through your shoulders or your chest or your triceps? What's... What's lacking? What's holding you you back? Maybe can you give, a, can you give an example there? Yeah. Well, let's say you're doing bench press, and that's your predictor for you know your muscle mass increasing. 
maybe you need more more work on your chest so where you do four sets of eight for bench press maybe you need to do some flies or maybe you need to add in some extra pressing work to actually specifically work more there so that you're stronger in future i think uh for, for that one a good one is would you agree akash like uh, paused presses. dumbbell press yeah, pause, pause dumbbell press. press. Yeah, yeah. Pause, pause press. Whether it's barbell, yeah. dumbbell, that's that's quite a good one for initiating chest yeah, exercise. Yeah, if you're weak, up, you're weak of the chest, I think that's the best exercise. One of the best exercises to improve bench press. And if you're weak through the yeah. triceps, so if you've got long limbs and you're struggling to walk out, yeah, then then you can do loads of things. You know, if you're specific to like powerlifting, you can do obviously board presses or something, or close group bench, whatever it may be. But there's there's always a way of you know finding an exercise to suit that person's limbs and mechanics and what they can and can't do in order to increase their strength. Yep. Third more often than not, I'm finding it's just people doing the same things over and hoping for a different result. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Are you a fan of uh, keeping the exercise quite similar and just changing more other variables, such as sets and reps, for example? Yeah, that's, that's really good. I like it. Um, I will change that main exercise, but only a little bit. Because yeah. You want to avoid like, soft tissue injuries and like yeah. repetitive stuff. But yeah. Generally, like say your, your predictor lift is, I don't know, a squat. Try and keep that the same and just weigh the sets yeah. and reps yeah. and what you're doing with that. Yeah, that's the way I would do it. And let, let the assistance work be changed from phase to phase. Exactly, yeah. Do you want to explain to people what um, you mean by predictor lift? Just in case anyone doesn't uh, know. I've completely jumped that, haven't we? Yeah. So predictor lift, um, you know, like say if you were doing powerlifting, that might be obviously your main list, bench press, squat, deadlift. If you're doing, say, more like bodybuilding, and this doesn't mean you have to be a bodybuilder if you're just trying to improve, improve body fit. composition, yeah. Yeah, body composition. You're choosing lifts that complement your physique and that will improve it, and they are the main lifts that you will work on getting stronger on, increasing reps, load, and whatnot. Let's so what, are your, what are your personal predictor lifts? So, like, this year, I've started uh, doing a little bit of powerlifting, so just the classic okay. lifts. Um, but previously, I've always looked at, like, the chin-up, Let's, I was just about to jump in. Let's let's go muscle group to muscle group and get Ben's favorite yeah. uh, predictor lift. So if you had to pick one lift per body part, do you think that's a good idea, Akash? Right. Yeah, go ahead. So let's go chest for the average person. Uh, dumbbell press. Flat or incline? I'd say incline because, you know, when did you ever hear of anyone saying my, my upper chest is too big? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we've got incline dumbbell press for chest. Uh, upper back. So a back thickness. Uh, you don't see many people with a bad back who can, you know, rep out their body weight for for reps. On what? Anyone who can do reps with their own body weight. On Barbara Rose. On chin ups. Oh, chin ups. Chin -ups. Yeah. Always, okay. always has a good back. Mm -hmm. And for back thickness. Yeah, I'd probably I'd probably choose something like a, a rack pull. Okay. Okay. Just because I would I would say maybe bent over row, but rack pull you could just overload it a little bit more than you can. Um, a bent over row. Okay, so so far we've got incline dumbbell press for the chest. We've got for back width chin ups, back thickness. We've got uh, bent over. Uh, sorry, um, rack pulls, shoulders. Um, if well, I'd say you need a ton of lateral raise variations. Yeah. In terms of actually getting some width to your shoulders, pressing. Obviously, you're going to get some from your incline presses. But if you need more volume on it, then I'd say any pretty much any variation of overhead press will work yeah prefer to see because you don't want you don't want to be worrying about balance too much with uh with lat raises do you focus more on like a pump uh or do you go for progression as well how, how, yeah, do, you, I how do you program i would program them like increasing volume week after week just yeah. because you know once you get to a certain weight yeah lateral raises become difficult especially like dumbbell lateral yeah. raises it's going to be silly if you're trying to do 20 kg strip lateral raises. It's not going to happen. It's much easier just to accumulate a ton of volume yeah. and let, let something else do the work. Yeah, agreed. Uh, switch over to the lower body. Give us your three favorite lower body exercises. That's hard, man. That's so hard. That, like, if, just take you two, for example. If, if you do a squat, Adam, it's going to hit all quads. If it's Akash, it's probably going to be lower back and... Yeah, it's funny you say that because I got I just made a, I just sent him an infographic that I made for that exact thing. Literally talking, yeah, that's funny. Literally just before we go on the call. <laughs> yeah, it depends depends on who that is. I mean, any exercise depends, but like for myself, let's, let's I, go with yourself. Yeah, go with yourself. Yeah, for what for you myself, always care to I would choose, um, a front squat. Yeah. Quad. I would choose a 
Romanian deadlift, if I had to do just hamstrings. Yeah. And you said I get one more, so I'd probably choose like a hack squat on a machine-based exercise. That sounds good. Adam, yeah. what are your big four? One upper body push, one upper body pull, one lower body pull, one lower body push. Mine would be uh, purely out of like, are we talking enjoyment or what do I think? No, just do what you, what you, what you keep as your All right, uh, incline barbell press, just because yeah. I'm strong on it, but it doesn't grow my chest, but I like it. Um, definitely the bent over row for back. I do like the rack pull as well, like for other people, for myself, bent over row. And for legs, it would be, it would be a back squat when I do squat. Yeah. <laughs> when I do legs when you, when you do legs yeah, but you yeah probably actually I'm doing them after this call I'm doing legs after this call actually yeah you probably get a lot out of the squat like three sets that's all he needs to do yeah it's, so he'll he'll train if we ever train less together he'll he'll we'll do the same workout it might be like leg curls squats and leg press for example I wouldn't even feel that sore but he'll be completely in bits for like a week right yeah yeah. just get so much out of every exercise compared to yeah. how we would the other thing that I noticed for me with legs it's uh, really odd is say I train legs at 10 a.m. say this morning, they will start hurting by nine o'clock tonight. Yeah, it's I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it in any other muscle group. It's just but legs. I get that in the lats. Remember, I was saying to you on the plane last week. I was like, oh, my lats from this morning. It's like to hurt. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't that's get it in my upper body. Part. Yeah, that's my strongest body part. But, so for you, it's, it's just. But yeah, legs. I can train them in the morning, and by evening, say I'll be in bed. You know, like Netflix on, unwinding. You know, before I go to sleep. Then I go to get up to have my last meal. As I get out of bed at like say ten o'clock or something, that I'm like fuck, I can feel it, you know. <laughs> but same thing. A lot of that's to do with what like kind of Akash said. When you're when you connect very well with the muscle, yeah, yeah. Especially under actual load, it hurts like hell, right? I yeah. mean, if you hit those, if you hit a squat, it's all quad for you. Like if I hit a squat, it's mostly glutes, hips, yeah, yeah, glute, hips and a little bit of low back. So. So we've had Ben's favorite exercises for uh, chest, back width, back thickness, three for the lower body. Uh, I've spoken about incline barbell press, bent over row, and squat. Akash, your favorite three to four exercises? Yeah, my upper body push would be floor press. Uh, pull would be bent over row. Uh, lower body, Romanian deadlift, and uh, leg press. Yeah. Why the leg press anyway? Just oh, I just get so much out of it. Even well, even, my range, my range even with his even yeah even with his partial range, even with his partial reps he's still my range isn't even that great but for some reason I just get so much out of it I just stopped squatting uh, two years ago now I haven't done a free squat in ages I just mm-hmm. leg press and I do hack squats as well actually they they they're really good we do a close tie between the two yeah. I, I like hack squats a lot but you have to go you have you to, have to, to find the right machine, knees yeah, yeah. Your knees get destroyed otherwise your knees are wrecked yeah. But the leg press, you've got to go such high reps because the range. That's and- the thing, yeah. So I go high reps and I pause it as well, it's just to give me more time and attention. Mm. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Number one tip for somebody that is just about to start a body transformation. So they've just come to you as a client. Say you were to sit with them, do a face-to-face consult. What would be your tip to them? Don't deviate from the plan I've given you. That's the main. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah, just just follow it. I just swear. trust me. Yeah. Honestly, man, half the time, it's just, if you follow the plan, all I have to do every check-in is just say, like, well done, keep going. <laughs> yeah. that, that's normally it. And then it's maybe two or three adjustments because everything's working. You know, we all know if you're consistent with the diet, you're hitting your step count, you're training as hard as you can throughout, you will make, you know, you're going to get great results. Your transformation is going to be as good as it can be in the time frame. But, so be consistent and do it properly. Perfect answer. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I wish, I wish it was more glamorous. I wish I could say something like. Well, we don't want it to be. We want it to. We want them to hear that, no. right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's real, and, and we're we're with you. Like, just just follow the plans. You've you've paid for a service. You know, you put your trust in yeah. your trainer. Don't make excuses. Just follow it to the T. Report in, and as you say, chances are if they execute 100, percent the first probably six weeks, if it's set up correctly, you shouldn't have to make any changes really. Yeah, and then it's sure. just the odd change here and there to keep them going. The only reason why you should be making changes weekly is either towards the end of a competition prep or the clients that screw up, <laughs> and you're yeah. constantly trying to just create that bigger deficit to you know offset the <laughs> the overfeeding. Yeah, well that that's the hard part. I mean, I guess I think we all know you know calorie deficit is going to work and you're going to lose weight, but once you put a human in with that plan, then you've got to manage them and be like, all right, 
well, here's the plan. How are you executing it? What's what are you finding hard, like mentally? Can you do this? Is the deficit too much for you? And you know, manager person, that's the actual part of coaching. Yeah. Sending a diet sheet is that's the easy not, bit. That's the easy bit. That's what we learn straight away. Yeah, anyone can go online nowadays and just use a calculator, right? And they right. can come up with it. The reason why they're paying us is to have that, that week one to one personalized it. coaching. Yeah. yeah. And to not like make the silly mistakes that we all definitely did. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially nowadays, you know, the internet and social media is, is, is awesome, but it can also just give people information overload. So oh, it's definitely. handy when you hire a coach, just let them sift through the bullshit and just yeah. map it out for you. And it just all that conflicting information that you're reading, just, just forget it. Just follow yeah. what your coach says. Just need a focus. Mean, yeah. Just follow one person. How often, how often do you guys get like new clients? That fucking phone. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> how often do you guys get a new client who'll be like, oh, you know, you've sent them a plan and you get five different questions on, can I do intermittent fasting? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And you're like, dude, you hired me. Come on. Like, yeah. trust me, trust in what I know and that you will get, you are going to get a great result. Like why, what's with all the questions? That comes from Google. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Yeah, it's, I, I get it as well, where you set them up on a plan that is, you know, you're making it easy for them, but you know it's going to work. And they'll needlessly try and overcomplicate it with supplements that they've read or dieting protocols and so on. And it's, as you say, just, just follow the plan. Just trust us. Let us make the... I mean, I said to Akash last week, I even had like a, a client trying to tell me what adjustments to make. <laughs> I'm like... I just had to, you know, politely write back. Uh, hopefully he's not listening to this. Um, yeah. He politely write back like, dude, no offense, but this is what I do like day in, day out. <laughs> just, just give me your check-in yes. information. Let me know how your week's gone. I'll make the changes. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> yeah. um, supplements. What are your three top supplements? Say uh, for muscle growth and then for a fat loss client. <laughs> okay, so I would say, first of all, some of the supplements are going to say, I wouldn't even class as supplements. Like whey protein or a protein powder is just essential. You yeah. could look at it as, you know, a food replacement if you combine it with whatever you want in a smoothie. But if we're talking about like actual supplements, things like um, a fish oil, vitamin D, because we live in England, we have no sunshine, um, and maybe <sighs> tough. I mean, those two I tend to give everyone. I'd be it would be hard pressed to choose a third. Maybe a probiotic. So you're going down the health route. The health route, but I mean, like everything else is kind of. I wouldn't say it's a must-have. It's it's a nice to have. It can help. It's useful. Okay, what what would be your nice to haves for muscle growth? Oh, okay. like the cherry on top of the cake. Once you've got their health soil, once you've got the fish oils, the vit D, the probiotics, if you're yeah, trying to maximize and get that one to 2% extra when it comes to chasing growth. We can get a bit more out of you. I mean, get some EAAs in, get some Vitago into the mix, some creatine, citronella, malate, you know, whatever you need in that, in that sense. If, if, you're, if you've got the extra budget to spend on that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those are the go-tos. But honestly, I've really scaled back on my recommendations for subs. I use, I would have given you a list as long as you're on if you asked me five years ago. Like, you yeah. must have these 10, otherwise you won't get the results. But I would, I would keep it as basic as I can, try and get that person eating as well as I can. Um, use, a, use a multi, use a vitamin D, use an omega. And then if you really, really feel that you need extra support for like gut function or something, then we can look into that, maybe digestive enzymes, probiotics and whatnot. Yeah. Akash? No, I'm, I'm in agreement. In agreement. I recently started beta alanine again. Oh, you, you asked me about that the other day. Which is quite, which is quite exciting. <laughs> I don't know if it's working or not. But, um, how much are you using? Sorry? How much beta alanine are you using for training session? Uh, what do you say? Three grams? Yeah, 3,000 3, three grams. grams. Yeah, three, yeah grams. three grams. Are you tingling on, on three grams? No. Did you split no. the dose? No, I have it all in one shake. I put it in my shake. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. So I have intro work, I have that, creatine, EAAs, and the salt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you add salt to the shake as well? Yeah. <laughs> nice. there's, there's a funny story. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
So, so I, I recommended him like, like a small amount. How much do you put in every time? Half a, tea, half a teaspoon, yeah. Half a teaspoon, yeah. A decent, a decent hit. It's like a gram of sodium there. Perfect. Um, uh, fat loss supplements. Are you a fan of any of them in particular? Or um, yeah, just... there's one that I am a huge fan of and that works. No, actually, that's a lie. There's two. The main one is caffeine. I'm a huge fan of caffeine. Yeah, uh-huh. um, like when you're in the, the horrible part of your diet when you're about to do your photo shoot and you're struggling, ca- caffeine is a go-to, must-have. It's the only thing that's going to get through a horrible diet. Um, and then you guys endorse this a lot, but I've been a big fan of it for years. Your hindin, if okay. you react well to it, is great. Um, I myself don't react well to it. I get really anxious on it, so I don't use it for whatever reason i'm okay with caffeine yeah. but yeah him being in the dose that's required i just can't do but yeah i like that one a lot yeah but outside of that your diet has to be spot on don't stop looking for a magic pill because it doesn't work that way no the, yeah the calorie deficit is is the key at the end of the day but yeah, yeah for, for the for the more serious trainees that have got their ducks in a row everything's nailed caffeine and yeah him being uh, a great i was actually reading uh, yesterday that caffeine, um, about 600 milligrams a day for yeah. the average person, um, can equate to about an extra pound per month in fat loss, really? which, you know, for a competitor, that's a decent. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I think it's like a really? two, yeah, it's about two to three percent raise in metabolic rate, which uh, equals about 100 to 150 calories per day, which over a month is an extra pound of fat loss. Which, 600 milligrams, yeah. 600 milligrams, yeah. That's a decent hit, yeah. That's a lot of caffeine as well, though. I'd say, like, for anyone who's listening, take oh, your time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd split that through. That's per day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's not dropping it in one hit. Um, so yeah. how, I would, how I would run it if it was me is I would probably start a competition prep or a photo shoot diet and maybe, like, 200 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, I, I don't like coffee much, so I prefer using caffeine capsules so I can, you know, follow, I can uh, control the dose. So yeah. I buy 200 milligram caffeine capsules, and I would run 200 milligrams first thing in the morning, you know, to get me going for my power walks or whatever, I'd use that, milk that for like six to eight weeks. Then I'd probably add in an afternoon dose at 200 milligrams. So I'd have 200 milligrams in the AM, then the PM, and then the tail end, the last four weeks of a prep. You could bump up the morning dose to maybe 400 milligrams and then the uh, afternoon. I think I did, uh, towards the end of my prep, I was on 1.2 grams a day. Jesus, yeah, you, dude. You can take oh, caffeine pretty high. Right. Actually, you know? I was doing a lot, yeah. And then I came off the cash. Unzip your your thing again. The mic keeps okay. rubbing on your hoodie. Um, cash, did you did you feel anything at that amount? I mean, no, no, you I wouldn't feel to... anything. Oh. I was dead. <laughs> when you when you finished your competition, how how long did it take you to taper off that amount? Oh, I just came off for the next day. <laughs> yeah, I just came off for the next day. Did you get Did you get any withdrawal symptoms from caffeine? No, the only thing I felt was, uh, I think, hunger, because hung- caffeine suppresses it so much, right? But yeah. I didn't feel any. No. Man, that's, that's crazy. I've never actually heard of anyone taking that amount. Oh, it was insane. It was because of the shreddable, that's why. I was taking that. Yeah. that. That had a lot of caffeine in it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I took that in 2014, like, my whole prep for a, for a competition. And it was a very good product, but I never ever got anywhere past they, 16, 600 they, milligrams. They've changed the think- formula. They yeah, yeah. yeah. 2014 it was tame, right? Yeah, this new one's called uh, yeah, Shreddable Untamed, and that sums it up. It's it's brutal. Um, very good stuff. So um, this is the curveball question: What's one book that you have gifted to more people than any other, or one book that you would absolutely recommend listeners read? One book that you should definitely read is Lyle McDonald's Guide to Flexible Dieting. Okay, so that, that's gold. Um, basically, it's just how to have a sustainable diet outside of your transformation. So, managing your calories, macros, preferences, meal timing, whatever, and just not losing your shit when when you're following off diet, basically, and maintaining a leaner physique year round, and enjoying your life. That book is key. Yeah. Give it a read. Perfect. Good. Uh, anything else that you want to add, Akash? Well, we're all good. We're all good. Uh, what about, have you got any books that I could read that you would recommend that are like number ones? 
Um, so I'll go first. So I know Akash will be like lifestyle related, so I'll keep it training related. Uh, mine's Lyle McDonald's Rapid Fat Loss Handbook. Oh, I've read that. That's great. It's the PSMF. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a cool one. Completely contrasted to what you've just recommended. Yeah, that's a good one. So for trainers listening to this, reading both books, I think will set you up to be a pretty good coach because you're going to know how and when to implement a really fucking aggressive diet with the, the PSMF. And then you're also going to know what to do with clients, you know, the longer term clients, the psychology, psychology side of it in the flexible dieting you've just recommended. So if, yeah. if you're trying to educate yourself as a coach or a trainer out there, I think those two books uh, would be pretty, pretty damn good uh, go tos. And, and, and if you want to be, and if you want to be focused, and if you want to be focused, you buy the one thing. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. The name of the book. It's the name the of the one book. Thing. That'll keep you on track with everything you do. That's my favorite book. I made Adam read it. Hopefully, he's taking it. Adam, yeah. you know when? Yeah. You know when you do your? I think it was like thirty-five day prep. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you use quite a few of the rapid fat loss style. Yeah, it was, it was, um, yeah, it t- yeah, certain days were like eight, nine hundred calories. Just didn't eat, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was tough, um, but it worked. So the, the, the basis of that prep was, um, it was like 300 grams of protein, which remained constant throughout. Uh, carbs at the most were like 120 grams or so, which, you know, for somebody my weight isn't, uh, isn't a lot. Fats were like 40, 50 grams. And then towards the end, it just, it just got worse. Well, it was uh, less than that. Yeah, I thought it was... Yeah, no, as in I pulled it like yeah. lower and lower okay, and lower. Yeah. But that's, so it started out at maybe like 1,600 calories um, and it finished on about eight, eight 900, um, which for those listening, I, you know, I'm not recommending it, but it was a 35-day competition prep. Like this is where we mentioned earlier, sometimes you have to do the, uh, the unsustainable um, and also Pen that spits. clearly shows. <laughs> no, you know what? That clearly shows. You know when you, you know when you get a food diary and it says, "Oh, I've been eating 900 calories and I didn't drop." Yeah, precisely. Like I've been there. I've done it. Uh, I didn't get any metabolic damage. You know, my body didn't go into starvation mode and and store all the the food that I was consuming. It it fell off. <laughs> it, yeah. it it came yeah. off. Um, Why well, with the cardio side of it? Um, I knew that at that calorie level, um, I just couldn't do any justice to real cardio. So I just did a step goal. So all other preps, um, I'd always done, you know, a mix of lifts, a step goal, some hit or whatever. Whereas this prep, I knew that just on that low calories, you know, I was still working in London training my clients at the time. So I was up at like 4.30 in the morning to, to do X amount of thousand steps and the train into London. I mean, I remember that, that last like 10 days, you know, I'd be doing like trap bar deadlifts with a client uh, I used to give Akash this look as if to say, like, I got to strip the plates off of this bar for them. <laughs> oh, my it, God. It was, it was tough. Um, yeah, the last four weeks before day is when everything goes machine based, right? Yeah. Yeah. All your clients are doing machine work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just how, pick up dumbbells. How, how much were you training when you were doing like 900 calories? Uh, training was six days a week. So it was push ball legs, push ball legs, um, three heavier sessions, three lighter sessions. Um, and then supplements were uh, caffeine in, I, I mean, I, I don't even know how much caffeine I was taking. Um, and then your him bean was sky high. So it, most people, you know, recommend the typical 0.2 milligrams per kilo. I did that twice a day. So I was taking 0.4 milligrams per kilo. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're, was, you're big on vasoburn, weren't you at one point? Yeah, I was using vasoburn as well. Yeah. So vasoburn, I, but it was, you know, when it's 35 days, you just have to throw the kitchen sink at it and just think, this is going to suck. Um, but it's short, it's sharp, it's going to be over with. So, so yeah, it was like, yeah, sh- a shit ton of caffeine. Um, the him bean was just like a handful of pills. I, I, towards the end, I wasn't even counting. I was just, I was just, this, <laughs> this, to clients listening, don't do this. <laughs> but towards the end of it, that last like 10 days, 14 days, I'm thinking, you know, I, I just got to get this, this butter off my lower back. <laughs> So I just get in the tub, just empty it in my hand, just swallow a handful of that, repeat it again at two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, vaso burn, I was just bathing in it, basically. Um, After after you finished, how how long did it take you to feel normal? Do you know what? This is what I tell everyone. Um, So I get hit really hard when I diet, like psychologically. My mood, within two, three weeks of dieting, my mood takes a massive hit. You can attest to this, Akash, can't you? Like, 
I just, I just become really like untalkative. I just want to sit. I used to go into UP City. You can ask Emily this. I'd walk in. Uh, she would ask me how I was every day. I'd pretty much ignore her most days and then just walk straight into the massage room, switch the light off and just sit in the dark on my phone. Like, I, would, wow. I would do my best not to be rude to anyone because I think I, I got given this bit of advice once and I'm going to use the C word on this podcast, okay? I'm going to... Actually, I'll just say the C word. I, I won't actually... Basically, when I first ever did my show, I was 20 years old and there was this bodybuilder that trained in the gym as well. And I'd always kind of look over to him and you know, you're like, you know, you get inspired by somebody like they're kind of your idol, but you're 20 years old. You've, I've never said hello to him. So anyway, I start my diet and this guy comes over to me and he's like, oh, uh, my name's, I'm not going to use his name because he lives in the same town. Um, and he's just like, oh, I hear you're doing a show. I said, yeah, yeah, my first one. He goes, I've got a really big bit of advice for you. And I said, yeah, you know, I think it's going to be this magic supplement or this, this protocol. Yeah. He looked at me and he went, don't be a, the C word. <laughs> and my face just dropped. I'm like 20, I was expecting like some miracle. And I just looked at him and like baffled. And he was like, trust me, the amount of people that do a diet, it's your choice. You're putting yourself through this. And the amount of people that do it and then they take it out on other people. Don't be that guy. So it's kind of always been in the back of my mind. So when I am dieting, I know that I'm really irritable. My mood takes a massive hit. So rather than like take out on other people, I just take myself off and I'll just go sit alone in, in like a dark room or something all day. And, I, and I'm cool with that. I'm fine. Um, when people do, they keep asking me questions. That's when I get a little bit snappy. Um, yeah. Where I'm going with this is that I do get hit psychologically, hit pretty hard when I diet, but it comes back so quickly for me, like two, three days. And I'm fine. As soon as I get my fat intake back up, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, really does. Literally within like, yeah, two, three days, I feel normal again. Now, that's not saying that I am recovered, like hormonally and stuff. That's going to take a while. We all know that. Um, but in terms of like my mood, you know, psychology, mental well-being, yeah, within like two, three days post show, as soon as I've just had some dietary fats increased and just that, that relief of getting over and done with, I feel yeah. almost back to normal. Because you're, you're recomping soon, aren't you? Like I'm just gauging this to see how bad your mood's going to be. Yeah, so this, uh, actually the video goes up tomorrow. Um, so for those of you, this is going to be like two weeks late, so it would have been up by now. Um, but basically, uh, it's going to be 12 weeks. So the first six weeks uh, is going to be muscle growth. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I've set my diet about 4,000 calories per day. Started on it today, which is why I was a little bit late getting on Skype. Akash would have noticed because I had to eat a damn meal. So I've already had three meals by now, whereas typically I'd have had one. Um, so yeah, so the goal over the next six weeks is to just add as much muscle tissue as possible in a small frame of time. And then the back six weeks is how I transition into like a semi-aggressive diet, um, ready for Akash and I go to San Diego on the 12th of May. So we've got about 12 weeks until that. So it's going to be almost like a pyramid. So it's going to be up, 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 and then down, 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 down. And I just want to kind of document it, talk through the diet changes that I make at that, that seven-week mark when I flip the switch from gaining into to losing, um, the supplement changes that I make. So at the moment, I'll be relying heavily on like intra-workout carbs, branch cyclic dextrin, and so on. So when I diet, I'll just pull them out because it's easy to remove those. I'll start on your himbean again caffeine and i'll run through my dosages of those so it should be quite interesting hopefully so you you prefer a shorter prep basically yes yeah i'm, I'm one of these people um like my training is the same my yeah my my attitude to dieting i've just always been like 100 meter sprinter and everything i do is you know, akash is like you know very consistent very paced really good at just ticking off the box at one at a time day after day I'm just kind of like that all or nothing approach. Um, so for me, I, I prefer to just diet really, really, really hard over a short period of time as opposed to like the 21 week prep that he did. For me, <clears throat> for me, that's just like mental torture. 21 weeks of, you know, one foot in front of the other every day. That's, yeah. that's where I take my hat off to him. Um, so I prefer the just go all out, you know, five, six weeks. So it should be quite interesting for some people to see. It's not going to be as extreme as the competition one because I'm not competing, not. right? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I have no need to do that. But it will still yeah. be, you know, relatively extreme. Should get a decent chunk of body fat off. Um, I mean, realistically, 
if, if I go to extreme, I'm just going to lose all the lean tissue that I've gained in this first six weeks, you know? True enough. So yeah. it's kind of, it's a bit of a balancing act. This first six weeks really is more about like reclaiming Regain. lost tissue. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's just getting back into the groove of things. Like my, my pressing, um, so I finished last year on, I think like one, four, five, or either six to eight reps on the incline barbell press. Whereas back at MI40, I did like 140 for a really shaky four, wasn't it? And it was like yeah. pausing yeah. at rep three. Um, my bent over row, I got it to 140 for either four or five um, in December. Whereas I did it the other day for 120 for five. So strength dropped off a lot. So this first six weeks is just gonna be about regaining strength, getting food back up again, getting back into like habits, you know, that we would instill in our clients. I've just kind of lost my way a little bit. So I need to get back into that. And then once I'm in the swing of it, switch gears and go into an aggressive diet. So yeah, I think it'll be quite interesting. Cool. Yeah. Um, Right. How can people find you, Ben? So for those of you that... For those that are listening and they want to now hunt you down, what's the best way of hunt me down on Instagram? My handle is at bm personal training, um, and yeah, from I there, you, uh, there, kept there the I was gonna say, you kept <laughs> you the same name. Like yeah, it's got to be simple. It's got to be <laughs> so, so at bm um, personal training. Yeah, and then from there you can go to my website via the Instagram. Yeah, perfect, cool. Uh, Akash, any. Do, do, yeah, you, you can find, do the outro. You find us, yeah. yeah, you can find us at, at Akash Fagella, at Adam Haley one or at RNT underscore fitness. Or you can visit our website at www.rntfitness.com or .co.uk. Oh, that's a big we've, one for we've us. Now the, we've that's now got the .co.uk. Right? <laughs> yeah, so way, for those of you... Me, yeah? You've just prompted Sorry. No, you, you can visit our website on www.bmpersonaltraining.co. Perfect. So, um, yeah. yeah, for those of you that, that don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, um, we, when we first set this business up, Akash is usually pretty meticulous at things, you know, like spelling, grammar. He's pretty on point with it. Um, however, when it comes to purchasing our domain names, he managed to buy rntfitness.co.uk and rntfitness.com. So F-I-N-E-S-S without the T. So we, we didn't actually own the dot-com site. In my defense, though, the dot-com had already gone anyway. But he didn't know this. So, yeah, so we had a domain for RNT Finis that we've never used. Um, and then when we came to, to check the rntfitness.com, uh, it was a Japanese porn site. So we have spent the last like uh, nine months you know, on and off randomly trying to email the guy that owns the domain to try and you know, buy the domain off of him and saying to him, you know, this is a fitness site and you've got a porn site. Um, we contacted like the domain host, never got anywhere. And then thankfully the guy that does all our web stuff, Deerham, a little shout out to him. Um, he just messaged us out the blue. It was like, check rntfitness.com. And he'd bought it all for us, rerouted it and everything. So, so yeah, so you can catch on either domain now, .co.uk or .com. Global domination. Global domination. <laughs> Love it. Cool. Right. Thanks for coming on, Ben. Um, and we'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow night. See you tomorrow. Right. There uh, Bye. Anything you're going to say, Akash? Are you done? No. No. Silence. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>